private prisons and the way that they're using the incarceration of black and brown bodies as a way to exploit people, make money, and control political power is just a new iteration of a system that has been going on since this land was first colonized. Our effort started in the fall of 2013, and so from there we started doing research. We were looking into the university's investing practices, found out that you know, there's not a lot of transparency around this issue. Me and another student walked up to the building where this Advisory Committee on Socially Responsible Investing is. I made up a story about I was writing my urban studies thesis on development and like wanted to know about the university's investment practices, which was a total lie. Um, and after that, they sent us a list. When we first found out um, what Columbia's investments were, it was $8 million directly invested in CCA, which is Corrections Corporation of America. It's the largest private prison company in the US. And it was $2 million in G4S, which is an international security firm. And they do not only private prisons, but they also run all sorts of re security regimes like the Israeli apartheid state. We see the buildup of like our system of police and prisons as we know it as coming out of the period just after slavery where you have slave patrols, right? And you have a convict leasing system where black people in this country were essentially being re-enslaved um, through a process of incarceration. We actually like put up an abolish banner over on this Thomas Jefferson statue across campus because this school is built on stolen land by slaves and Columbia has all of these like statues memorializing that exact point in history. There's all kinds of amazing prison abolitionist work going on and divestment is just one part of that. We know, we saw, we watched all day long. It's one tactic that's a part of a much broader movement that includes like the people who are shutting down bridges and highways after the Daniel Pantaleo, the officer that killed Eric Garner here in New York City, non-indictment. We are connected to broader coalitions of folks who are organizing to get, you know, churches to divest, to get the city of Portland to divest, you know, things like that. I want y'all to be unified, regardless of race, creed, or whatever, but this is a black issue. There has always been labor to be exploited and money to be made out of policing black bodies in this country, and it's really fundamental to how we work. Connecting that right to how institutions like Columbia have been built up, being created as places for white men to come and learn and get fancy degrees and go on to make lots of money. The campaign launched with a letter drop in President Bollinger's office. This is why we've come to you disappointed with the inconsistencies we see between Columbia's rhetoric and its practice. This is a call for action. From the start, we really wanted a response from President Bollinger. We planned an action to take place outside of his classroom. He teaches a class on like freedom of speech. freedom of speech. <laughs> Um, which we found pretty ironic. Columbia invests in a system in which a black person is killed by police or security every 28 hours. We do need to do this. Divestment is urgent. A black person is killed every 28 hours by police or security. Columbia is invested in that system. Every person is killed every 28 hours by police or security. We have to be accountable to that. We've been trying to meet with you for eight months. Institutions like Columbia are so much held together by like fancy rhetoric that is a lot of times really empty. The important thing to say is that there's a process. It's been set up for a long time. There are students on it, there are faculty. The last semester was the 30th anniversary of the blockade in Hamilton Hall during the South Africa divest days that actually won 
divestment from South Africa in 85. There's been a lot of discussion about various things over the years. Uh, as Eric Hunter just said, apartheid in South Africa is a classic example. And so we kind of got together with those alum activists and just talking about strategy, like every tactic that they use, there's now some rule or some committee or something that the university has put in place to make it more complicated to organize. Columbia is not the easiest space to try and not have the police called on you. You really have the opportunity to make your case uh, in this process. It comes through that uh, process been, uh, to me and then to the trustees. So, and so you really just see the ways bureaucracy and bureaucratic repression and how it's kind of really built up in that historical way. I am thrilled that you have raised a number of questions that make people like me feel uncomfortable. This moment for us isn't about patting Columbia on the back or patting us on the back for that matter or about saying that Columbia has divested from systems of incarceration and policing. Like, Columbia is actively working with the NYPD to criminalize and displace people in West Harlem in order to expand this campus. We were trying to tie connections to the other ways in which the university perpetuates anti-blackness. For example, with the gentrification and expansion into West Harlem, there were raids that went on in the Grant and Manhattanville housing development last summer that Columbia backed because they said it was helping to keep our neighborhood safe. And in the process, hundreds of young men of color were locked up. We are not any more deserving of being here than anyone who is in prison is deserving of being there. It's really like global in its scope and that G4S is multinational. They're involved with militarization of the U.S.-Mexico border with checkpoints and detention centers and prisons in Israel and the occupied territories in Palestine. They run centers in the United Kingdom and South Africa unanimously across the board are a terrible company and are constantly, constantly dealing with complaints of human rights violations, sexual violence, torture, like all kinds of awful things. <laughs> It was always very important to be tying prison divestment to racial justice, to immigration justice, to gender justice, and really talking about how all these things are tied together. Columbia, stop your prison, stop! No more than this close, this close. Our demand was to have any direct investments divested, so they removed their investment in CCA and in G4S. They promised a negative screen for the entire private prison industry, so meaning that moving forward, Columbia won't be investing in private prisons again. But that that's not the end of the movement. That's not a kind of be-all, end-all win. Columbia is invested in systems of inequality that uphold the kind of image of the deserving of opportunity Columbia student. And so Columbia is in both ideological, material, and still probably other financial ways invested in these systems. And we're interested in continuing to work to dismantle those. I mean, I'm a senior, so hopefully other students after me.